Scorpio. Welcome to Pandora Astrology's monthly horoscope for June of 2022. We are the astrologers of Pandora Astrology. I'm Jamie Kell Miller. I'm in Berkeley, California. And I'm Julia Mijas in Pioneer, California. Well, Scorpio, this month's horoscope focuses on your intimate partnerships, whether those are financial partnerships like in business or um, emotional partnerships like a marriage or an intimate relationship. And if you'd like guidance about these relationships, you can find that in a lifelong love reading or in a natal and transit reading if you wanted to look at business partnerships. You'll find a link for these in the YouTube description below. Well, I want to begin actually with some longer term transitions that you've been involved in for some years already, perhaps. Um, most particularly the transits of Saturn and Neptune along some most particular houses in your chart. Saturn usually spends about two and a half years passing through a house. It's in the fourth house right now, and we can't really know how long it's been here and when it's going to finish without a look at your specific chart, but I can at least tell you how this feels so that you can identify it and know how to respond. Saturn brings the feeling of pressure to perform, a, a sense of your own limitations and constrictions, and even a feeling of fear wherever it goes. It's in your fourth house, and the fourth house is home and family, domestic life, heritage, and roots. So you might be feeling limited and constricted in your home life, or lonely, or as if there is some work that needs to be done around here, whether that's in the work uh, among your um, family members, helping people to get along better, or if it's to do with the physical structure of your home, such as a remodeling. Um, any of those might be very satisfying projects to engage in uh, from the point of view of Saturn that really wants you to make improvements around your home life. Um, the other planet I wanna speak to right now is Neptune and Neptune moves much much more slowly than Saturn. It spends on average about 14 years passing along through a given house. And so this yields a long-term era for you. And uh, Neptune is presently traveling through your fifth house, which is a house of fun, pleasure, play, creativity, self-expression, and hobbies. So Neptune tends to bring dreamy ideals to any area that it's in. And you can also get caught up in some illusions and delusions in whatever house Neptune is passing through. So it's really good to antidote that with some grounded realism. In this particular house, because it's a house of fun and play, that can also encompass love affairs, brief relationships, which are really just for the fun of it. And so Neptune, during its passage through this house, might have rose-tinted some potential flings that you've had and made you think that you'd made a soul connection. And if Neptune has done that to you, I apologize on behalf of Neptune. <laughs> and I would say it's time to put your feet firmly on the ground. Also, if Neptune has had you caught up in an addiction to video gaming, I apologize on behalf of Neptune, and I would say that you need to find something better to do with your leisure time. <laughs> okay, uh, you can find out exactly when Neptune entered this house and when it leaves in a reading, and uh, you can find readings on our website, pandoraastrology.com, in the readings tab. <clears throat> Now, uh, the last thing that I want to throw at you before Ju uh, Julia takes over is uh, Jupiter's transit. Jupiter has recently moved into your sixth house of work, health, service, and personal organization, and is bringing his characteristic luck, optimism, growth, and expansion. And these are wonderful things to have happen in your house of work because it, it could um, increase your customer base or uh, the people that you serve in your service business. So this is a great transit to know more about, and I strongly recommend that you check uh, last month's news playlist, May 2022, on our YouTube channel, Pandora Astrology, where you can find the Jupiter in Aries video and find out more about that. Hey, Julia, what's up with Mercury, Venus, and Mars for the Scorpios of the world? 
so much good news for Scorpio this month. Well, for everybody, Mercury is going direct on the third, uh, and Mercury goes retrograde three times a year. So uh, we're just kind of finishing up our second retrograde cycle, and Mercury retrogrades can be very frustrating time periods because Mercury is the planet of communication and mind. And when it goes retrograde, it can be a time of a lot of miscommunications, tech issues with technology, issues with travel too. These are other things that Mercury represents. And this whole cycle has been taking place in your seventh house of partnership and consultants. So um, the whole Mercury retrograde cycle, a lot of it took place last month. So if you do want to hear more in depth, I do recommend you check out last month's video too. Um, but Mercury has been retrograde in your seventh house, meaning that you could have been experiencing miscommunications with your partner. You know, you guys have a conversation and walk away with two different meanings of what was said. Uh, Mercury retrograde can also be a time of needing a second opinion from a consultant, perhaps. Maybe if Mercury retrogrades can be times of review and redoing, and the seventh house represents consultants, anybody you hire for, um, for a second opinion or like a doctor or a lawyer. So by the third, Mercury is going to go direct in your seventh, which means that these kind of issues are going to smooth out a lot. And then by the 13th, Mercury is going to pop into your eighth house. The eighth is the house of, uh, it's a financial house, the money you share with other people and institutions. So it represents taxes, debt, mortgages, loans, uh, inheritances, investments. And when Mercury is in the eighth house, there might be more communication about money. You could also be planning and strategizing. Um, you know, fi the financial sort of area of your life. And the eighth house is also a house of investigation and research. It's naturally actually ruled by Scorpio. So you're quite comfortable with eighth house stuff. Um, and it can be a time when your mind is very probing, where you want to research, where you want to really plumb the depths of something. And that's all well and good. Just be careful about not being too paranoid because that's another eighth house. Um, that's another uh, aspect of the eighth house too. Now, Venus is going to spend three weeks, she's the planet of uh, love and beauty, in your seventh house, and that's the house of partnership. So this is a really wonderful romantic month for all the Scorpios out there. Uh, if you have a partner, then it's just going to be a time of getting along really well, having a lot of harmony and pleasure and enjoyment with them. And if you're single, then it's a great time to meet somebody new. Um, and uh, Venus in the seventh house, after you've had all the squirreliness of Mercury retrograde in the seventh, last month and a little bit into this month, Venus in the seventh house can be a really good time to hire a good consultant. Mm -hmm. um, so if you've had some issues in the past with either doctors, lawyers, or people you hire for advice, later this month, actually, I, the luck is definitely on your side. And then by June 22nd, Venus enters your eighth house, where she'll be adding a little bit of luck to your finances. Maybe your partner gets a raise at work and starts sharing it with you, or uh, maybe you get a loan or something that's of the eighth house house nature. And Venus in the eighth is a very sort of um, sexual placement too. The eighth house uh, can, is a very kind of deeply intimate play, uh, house and Venus is the planet of love. So this can be a more intimate uh, time with your partner. Uh, and it's also a great transit if you happen to be in therapy too, uh, because the eighth house represents psychology. So this can be a wonderful time for being able to talk about difficult things, maybe make a few breakthroughs on yourself as well, and look at your dark side uh, unflinching. Uh, and then finally, I will say a few things about Mars. Mars is a lot feistier than Venus. Venus is known as a lucky or benefic planet. Mars can be a little bit more challenging, but he's still very, very useful. And Mars represents action and activity. He's the archetype of the warrior. So Mars is going to be in your sixth house all month. This is the house of health. This is the house of work. And it's also a very service-oriented house. It's about, it's a very helpful house. So um, with Mars in the sixth, you could feel very, very driven at work you know, getting a lot of your energy um, out at your job. Uh, sometimes Mars in the six might mean that you have some disagreement and frustrations with the people that you work with. However, if you channel all that energy to really being of service, you know, really helping out at work, really helping out in your personal life too, then this can be a very, very productive time where, you know, you can, you can be of wonderful assistance to others. The sixth house also does rule health. So Mars in the six can sometimes aggravate 
aggravate some chronic stuff, you know, if you have menstrual things or if you get migraines or inflammation, sometimes Mars in the six can kind of kick that stuff up. But a very, very wonderful um, constructive use of Mars in the six is starting a new physical routine that can mm -hmm. be supportive to health. Like uh, maybe saying, I'm going to get up a little early and go for a jog in the morning, or I want to do yoga, you know, start doing a little yoga at home. Mars in the six can really give you a great boost for a good physical routine. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to tell you about the two moons and the seasonal change. <clears throat> the first is the full moon in Sagittarius happening on June 14. That moon falls in your second house. Emotions tend to run high wherever the full moon is. Um, and the second house is the house of finances and of values. Uh, you already have Sagittarius in the second house. So um, I think that it makes sense during a moon like this to watch your spending that in particular you may fee be feeling magnanimous and also easily taken advantage of and i say that uh, because neptune is squaring this moon and so neptune brings in a note of confusion and mystery perhaps idealizing or rose tinting the situation and so um, your your temporary mood of generosity could be taken advantage of and, um, and I think it will be important to keep your feet on the ground um, and also draw on the rational as uh, Saturn's, uh, Saturn, uh, which is helpful, Saturn is helping by sextiling the moon and trining the sun. Uh, Saturn can help you to get, you know, a little bit more grounded. Um, then the next thing I want to mention is that the sun which starts the month here in Gemini in your eighth house is going to be quickly moving on into your ninth house. Wherever the sun goes, we should shine the spotlight of our high quality attention because attention is like sunlight. Wherever you shed it, things can grow and thrive. The ninth house is a house of meaning. It's a house of resilience. It's a house of hope. And, uh, and worldview and big picture. When the sun enters this house, it's a good time to spend about 30 days asking yourself about the greater meaning behind everything in your life, uh, behind the actions that you take, the money that you spend, the people that you relate with, the places you spend your time, and, um, and how you conduct some areas of life like career and home life. This is just kind of an all-purpose transit. So, um, but it really is about asking yourself, how does my worldview impact and contextualize the other areas of my life and how can I make it better? Uh, as the sun continues through this house and it will spend about 30 days here, the moon arrives to join it here on June 28th at the end of the month for a new moon in Cancer. And um, the, uh, the new moon is always a good time for new beginnings, for the planting of seeds that will not be, you know, budding or bearing fruit right away, but will blossom and bear fruit later. Um, seeds must always be planted in the darkness, and that's what the new moon is. So, um, and another meaning that's occurring to me for this house, the ninth house is travel. Uh, it was traditionally viewed as the house of long journeys over water. And, um, and so this moon is a great opportunity to plant the seeds for journeys, not necessarily journeys that are going to happen right away, but journeys that are gonna play out. So long distance travel, whether that's vacations or um, for uh, cultural reasons, um, uh, just to do some interesting exploring of this wide world that we live in. Um, I do want to warn you that there is a square to Jupiter that is included in this moon, and that um, Jupiter can uh, add certainly a note of optimism and hope. Jupiter is an Aries, which um, adds a, a quality of will and forthrightness and honesty. But these things are also, uh, they can sometimes go too far. And, um, and so it's important to not, you know, let your travel plans be over optimistic, overblown, or uh, just too big to be actually doable. 
Uh, you can find out more about both of these moons uh, on our YouTube channel, Pandora Astrology, in the June 2022 news playlist. You can also find out more about them on our monthly forecast page at our website, pandoraastrology.com. And if anything that you heard today makes you want a reading, you can find a reading on our services tab. And uh, if you want to take a class to learn more about yourself through astrology, well, that's on offer on our website as well. And until next time, we'll see you around the cosmos. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.